A royal family united in grief and duty for the funeral of Queen Elizabeth II. Welcome everyone to Entertainment Tonight. Kevin Frazier joins us from London. Kev, 10 days of mourning has all led to this. Michelle, there is nothing that can truly describe the spectacle and the heartbreak that we saw today here in London as the world said its final goodbyes to the queen whose love of country was only matched by her love for her now devastated family. Of the many poignant scenes today, one of the most heartbreaking was seeing the Queen's great-grandchildren in mourning. That seven-year-old Princess Charlotte breaking down. She and Prince George arrived with Mom Kate to Westminster Abbey, and inside, the nine-year-old prince in a navy suit solemnly sang alongside Dad William and seemed to get emotional. Charlotte's only jewelry, a small diamond brooch in the shape of a horseshoe, a tribute to her late Gan Gan, who loved horses. Four-year-old Prince Louis did not attend, but Katie Nichol, who wrote the book on the new royals, explains Charlotte and George's special relationship. We've always had an heir and a spare. The Queen was supported by Princess Margaret, her sister. Charles was supported by the Princess Anne. William was supported up until recently by Harry. So that notion of the heir and the spare is something that we're now seeing continued mm. in um, Charlotte and George, and it's rather lovely. We just learned about the decision actually this morning that they were going to participate. Gail King with us today, weighing in on the children's presence. Prince George is nine, and he now is second in line for the throne. So certainly he is being prepared. The children rode in a car chatting with Grandma Camilla. The car behind them, completely silent, with Meghan and Countess Sophie stoically staring out different windows. But when Meghan got emotional today, watch little Charlotte briefly turn towards her. The Duchess responded with a slight smile, unlike the House of Windsor's feuding brothers. What I didn't see was them together, other than in the procession. William was able to salute in uniform. Harry was not. This after Charles requested the Duke of Sussex wear his military attire for Saturday's vigil. Today, Harry and Meghan held hands. But what was interesting, the royal seating plan. It, it almost seemed like every effort was being made so that there wasn't an awkward moment where they had to sit side by side at one point. Charlotte was put in between them. Inside St. George's, William was gracious towards his brother, allowing Harry and Meghan to take their seats ahead of him. A few special nods to Her Majesty? Meghan wore the pearl earrings the Queen gave her. Her dress, a black version of the Stella McCartney cape dress she wore to the Queen's 92nd birthday. Kate had on the Queen's necklace, which Diana previously wore. Di's brother, Charles Spencer, honoring Elizabeth with cufflinks bearing her cipher. Princess Di's private secretary, Patrick Jepson, and her biographer, Tina Brown, gave us insights into where the royal rift goes from here. Had Meghan and Harry studied Diana's experience carefully, there's a lot there that might have helped guide them in their own relations with the royal family. But will this mend the fences? If ever there was a moment when a reconciliation could happen, this is clearly the moment. King Charles wiped back tears during the one-hour service at Westminster. Nora O'Donnell, along with Gail, anchored live coverage on CBS. Today, to me, he looked ashen-faced. It was like the weight of all of this came crashing down. It's a moment I've been dreading, mm. as, as I know a lot of people have. He is trained for this for a very long time. He's yeah, ready. He of course, every detail of the day was carefully planned, including the symbols on the Queen's coffin. The scepter, the orb, and the imperial crown, I think they are probably the most important symbols of monarchy. And I think that moment where they were taken from the Queen's coffin, put up on the high altar, they will then go back to the tower, and the next time we see them will, of course, be at the coronation for King Charles III. The wreath on top of the Queen's coffin included myrtle that was cut from a plant that was grown from a sprig in her wedding bouquet in 1947. Charles also wrote a note. It said, in loving and devoted memory, Charles R. The R stands for Rex, or the Latin word for king. And this got a lot of attention on Twitter. For a moment, a spider could be seen crawling across the card. As for this moment, the bagpiper who closed the funeral is the same piper who woke the queen up every morning by playing for 15 minutes outside her window. He played on Elizabeth's final morning at Balmoral.
An estimated 4.1 billion people worldwide watch today's ceremony. Tens of thousands line the streets for a glimpse of the procession. As for the guest list, you're talking about 500 heads of state, yes. the emperor of Japan, President Biden. But I think what we thought was most interesting is to see all these royalty loaded onto buses like the rest of us to get here because that's how tight the security was. Gray's alum Sandra Oh attended as part of the Canadian delegation and British adventure host Bear Grylls, a leader in the UK version of the Boy Scouts, paid his respects. But it wasn't just the famous. I thought, wow, how extraordinary it is that Her Majesty's legacy includes including ordinary everyday Australians to attend her funeral. I spoke to Australian dentist Trudy Lynn. She works with patients with special needs and was one of the everyday heroes invited to be a part of today's service. She was only 25 when she took up the mantle and such a huge responsibility. And so I find that personally very inspiring as someone that wants to follow in her footsteps and continue to contribute to the community. Just before the Queen's service began, I was with famed British composer of Phantom of Opera and Cats, Andrew Lloyd Webber. He shared his own memories of their unique bond. You two had a special relationship, and she even came out to your house a couple of times. Yes, yes, she did. Um, I wrote a song for um, the last Jubilee, which was called Sing. She came around to the house, and we sang it for her. She had an enormous sense of humor. Someone who captured that warmth and grace, Getty Images royal photographer for nearly 20 years, Chris Jackson. One of my favorite pictures actually is of Prince George chatting to the Queen at Princess Charlotte's christening and he's pointing up, looking at her hat. Who knows what they're saying, but it's just a lovely moment. What was it like when Prince Philip was still here. Do you know, I was so lucky to photograph uh, Prince Philip and the Queen um, for their 73rd wedding anniversary. And then Prince Philip's opening up a card from his great grandchildren. And you can see the prince kind of lights that when he opens the card. They gave strength to each other throughout their life. And today, the Queen will be reunited with her prince for eternity. I think that moment where the Queen's coffin was lowered down into the royal vault was very, very powerful. What viewers may not realise is that in that same royal vault currently lying is the Duke of Edinburgh's coffin and they will both be interred together at this private ceremony which won't be televised. She wanted that final journey to be made with Philip by her side. As the Queen's coffin made its final procession to Windsor Castle, this poignant image shows her pony Emma and the head groom saying a final goodbye. Also on hand, her beloved corgis, Sandy and Mick. Prince William assures fans they will be well taken care of. Today's celebration of life is also an opportunity to look back at the fun side of the Queen. Elizabeth had a wonderfully wicked sense of humor and let it show, even getting both William and Harry to crack a smile while in a military lineup. In 2012, the Queen's playful side was on full display when she dropped into the opening ceremony of the Olympic Games with James Bond. What's she like in private? Is uh, she Very fun? funny. Really? Very funny. Wants to crack a joke and cracked a joke about me. Um, we're having our photographs taken and she just went, oh no, he's the one that doesn't smile. She doubled down on her acting skills, putting on a lighthearted, brilliant performance alongside Paddington Bear to celebrate her Platinum Jubilee. Perhaps you would like a marmalade sandwich. I always keep one for emergencies. So do I. I keep mine in here. She didn't carry a marmalade sandwich in her purse. Darren McGrady was Her Majesty's personal chef for 11 years. He reveals some royal secrets on his YouTube channel and his cookbooks are available on the website Eating Royally. I remember my first meeting, actually it wasn't quite a meeting. I saw the queen coming towards me with the corgis and then as we got closer the dogs saw me and then they started barking and then all at once they all started running towards me and instead of calling them off the queen just burst out laughing and i turned and i just ran and, and then never got to meet the queen that day <laughs> despite the tiaras and crowns darren said elizabeth's go-to breakfast was a bowl of cereal and she wasn't against eating out of good tupperware and despite dedicating her life to serving the crown, she never took herself too seriously. Boom. Oh, really? Please. Boom.